All right, how's it going everyone? So I wanted to do a little talk about how do I personally like to learn new pieces of technology? How do I learn new tech? And I want to kind of walk you through a scenario which I think happened to me recently where I had to learn a little bit more about React Query. And I want to show you like my thought process of, you know, what do I do to kind of get up to speed as fast as possible? So I really follow a couple of simple steps. Usually, if possible, before I even go to the docs, I will just, you know, to try to boost my own confidence and to convince myself that I can actually learn this and it's not too hard to do, I usually find a really quick overview video. I mean, Fireship is like the go-to person for like these quick overviews, just so that you can kind of get familiar with the lingo and just like really understand, you know, what is the purpose of this tool and how do you use it from like a, you know, a mile high view. Um, so Fireship, anything that's short, like this one's 2 minutes and 33. So sometimes these videos are too short and too condensed and they don't really tell you everything that you need to know about this, this, you know, this library or this technology. Some videos are too long, like, you know, 55 minutes. I'm good. I'm not going to, I'm not going to watch that. Although I like watching Theo's stuff. He has some good stuff. If you want to get more in depth into like advanced topics, um, Net Ninja, 14 minutes. Again, like some of these are pushing some time limits of like, I'm, I wouldn't be interested in watching that. A series is just too much. Like I'm not going to watch a nine minute video about a mutation. It's not that serious. Uh, but yeah, I'll just kind of like skim through some stuff and try to find a video that will like, just give me a good overview. Peter Tech's been growing pretty quick too. He's, he's a cool YouTuber. And then if I don't, if I, at that point, if I feel like I got a good overview, what I'll do is I'll go to the actual docs. Okay. Now, typically the way I learn tech is I just look at the code. All right. I've been coding for a very long time. So I just need to see some code to kind of understand like what they're doing. Now, sometimes it's good to read like the, the reasoning behind using this. Like you have to kind of convince yourself, is it worth spending this effort learning React Query? Or is it worth spending this effort learning Next.js? So Understanding the motivation and understanding like the whys is super important for me so that I can convince myself that I need to do this. I need to learn it. I need to use it. And don't just bandwagon. Like I know a lot of people like the bandwagon because other people are using it, but I, I kind of want to understand like what are the trade-offs of using this versus not using this. Um, so I'll read through it a little bit and then I'll just look at some code to see like how hard is it to get set up and then like, okay, here's some code. It looks like they just wrap a component with this query provider. We've seen this like in React Router, so this isn't something new. You just wrap up your main component with a provider, and that probably gives you access to using these hooks. Um, I'll just look at the code. Again, this hook looks pretty simple. It, the first argument is an array. I don't know what that array might be. I'll figure out soon enough when I go and look at the use query function. But then it looks like the second thing is the actual callback that needs to fetch the data from your API. I see as a fetch request here. And the thing that this thing returns is somehow getting put into the use query cache or state or whatever. But I also look at this. So like, okay, it looks like it returns is loading, which is cool. That means that instead of me having to make my own like loading state and change it from false to true as the request is getting made, it looks like React Query provides me as loading. It provides me some errors that might be happening and also data. So right off the bat, I have like a good understanding of what it is, how you can use it. And also like why, right? This this is much cleaner if it already has the built-in functionality of giving you a loading state. At that point, like I usually just start a project. So I'll follow the ghost get started guide. I'll install it. I'll run through it. Make sure I can actually get it running locally. Uh, don't run into is any issues. But usually most of, these, most of these tools have like a a small subset of the most important things you need to understand or learn. And in this case, the quick start guide says there's three core concepts of React Query. So the first one is queries. Let's look at queries. I'll probably read through this a little bit. Um, sometimes documentation can get overwhelming and you can get kind of lost, but just take it like one sentence at a time. Like read the sentence. Make sure you actually understand what you're reading. Like if you don't know what declarative means, it's not important. Let's be honest. Like they could have just wrote, wrote this with like, all this, a lot of this stuff is fluff. I'll be honest with you all. Like it's way of like marketing the, the tool. That's why I, I kind of just go to the code, but I mean, it's good to know like what the parameters are. So to understand like the, the benefits of react query, you kind of need to understand like what is server side state? What is a cache? Like what is the purpose of caching your server requests on your front end? Um, 
But, you know, you read through this and you realize, okay, the first argument is a unique key for the query. And you kind of have to have some knowledge about, like, what a key is. Like, what is a unique identifier? And, like, looking at this array, it makes sense that, okay, you can have many, many different elements in this array. And I'm assuming that React Query basically just takes that array, combines them all together in some type of unique hash or, you know, lookup key so that if you were to potentially have two arguments and one is different from the other, that you have two different caches in your React query. But that's just coming from knowledge that I, you know, already know about front-end development and like just coding in general. But, you know, you read through this, it tells you the arguments, what they are. Uh, this one unique key is used internally for refetching, caching, blah, blah, blah. I don't even like read through all this stuff, honestly. I usually just start building stuff, right? So again, I'm trying to I'll tell you my, my process of how I learn new tech. I watch a quick overview video to learn about the terminology. I go and I look through some of the code examples. I go through the get started guide and I just start using and building something with it. Building something with this tool is the best way that I like learning. Some people that might not work for them. Some people might want to read through this whole doc, but after I've built something with this, how do I turn off dark mode? I hate dark mode, but after I kind of build something with this, I will then go back. And once I've learned the core concepts, I'll go through and just see like, what else does this library provide me? Like what more can I learn about query keys? So once I've built like an actual small scale project with a React query, and I feel more comfortable about like with the purpose of it and why we use it and how to use it, I usually try to go through and just read through the docs, you know, maybe a, a page at a time, just so that I can learn new things about this tech and really make sure I'm not like doing something uh, unperformant on my projects and make sure I'm like, you know, fully utilizing the, the features that they provide me. I think one thing that happens is you don't truly read the docs, you start implementing your own stuff that might already be solved in the library or framework that you're using. Or you might be doing something that's very, very bad practice and they have a better best practices guide that you should read, right? So some of the stuff, I don't even know, like infinite queries, I haven't read this page yet, I don't know. A paginated queries, I haven't read this. I could kind of get a good understanding of like what the purpose of it is. Prefetching, I don't think I read this. I have read optimistic updates because that's something that I've actually tried to do in my application, right? You click on a button and it's supposed to save something to the back end, but there's like a delay where the, the thing you just tried to save isn't showing up because you know, there's, a res there's a latency between your UI and your back end, right? So optimistic updates are actually something useful to like implement because it makes your UX better. But yeah, I'll be honest with you, I haven't even read through all this, these docs and most of the times you don't need to to be able to create something good using the tool or language, but always try to, you know, allocate a day or two to like go back and make sure you read through this stuff just to make sure you're not missing out on something really important. Um, yeah, I don't know if this video is good, but you know, give me a thumbs up if you liked hearing the way I like to learn how to learn new tech and, you know, feel free to leave a comment below if you have a better way or a way that you like to do. Uh, also, join my Discord if you want to talk to me directly or ask any of my other uh, members in the community a question about coding or if you're stuck on something or if you need some help debugging. Anyway, have a good day and happy coding.